Hey guys, today we're going to talk about this old book, How to Analyze People on Sight by Elsie Lincoln Benedict. This book was published 100 years ago, 1921, and a lot of people would consider it very outdated, but I think it's actually the most accurate theory of human personality and human behavior out there. I think it's much more accurate than genetics or upbringing or astrology. Just looking at somebody, their body type determines their personality, in my opinion, better than anything else. In this scheme, there are five body types, and most people are going to be one predominantly, but very few people are pure any one type. Usually it's a mix of two or three. I would say two is the most common, and rarely are you going to find more than that. The first type and the most common type is the alimentive, otherwise known as the fat man or the enjoyer. This body type is mainly characterized by roundness. The hands and feet are not going to be large, and the person is not going to be very tall compared to the other body types. Now the book will say this type, their sole purpose is to indulge on delicious food, but there is more to that. Their eating habits are known to be a key component to why this type is considered the happiest of all five. One thing this type loves is comfort. When it comes to clothes, they usually pick old ones so they can save themselves the trouble of breaking in new ones. Comfort is usually preferred over class. Furniture choice for the Alimentive is very important since this is where they spend most of their day. When it comes to business, they become very clever. They will do everything in their power to pass work on to someone else. This is why you should avoid giving this type the harder jobs. They are usually unreliable in getting work done on time. The key to their happiness is to provide a comfortable area where they can relax and enjoy a full meal. All in all, the Alimentive type is just a jolly saint that loves life and looks at everything on the bright side. We will also see near the end of this video that when this type is mixed with the cerebral type, the big-headed thinker, that this is most likely to be a rich person, the alimentive person with a big head. This is a great manager of people, a business leader potentially, and very likely they are going to amass enough money to pay for their own comforts that they strongly desire as the alimentive. The thoracic type, also known as the thriller, I would also say the actor, possibly you could call them the athlete, and I would even say you could call them the drama queen. The thoracic was given this name because this type's circulatory system, the heart, arteries, and blood vessels, and the respiratory system, lungs, nose, and chest, are more highly developed than any other type. When introduced to a situation of excitement, embarrassment, or depression, this type will usually become red in the face. This is because they have a well-developed bloodstream. With all these qualities, the thoracic also have the highest temperament. They throw the biggest temper tantrums. The thoracic also is the most outgoing out of the five. They like expressing themselves, they will put themselves out there. They often do this for attention since they love approbation. Since this type is so connected to their emotional side, they often have the most empathy for one another because they have the ability to easily put themselves in another person's shoes. Unlike the alimentive figure, this type will choose class over comfort, so this will usually make the thoracic the best dressed in the room. Their strong point consists of personal ambition, adaptability, and quick physical energy. Their weakest points are too great excitability, irresponsibility, and super sensitiveness. When you socially encounter this person just to have a fluid conversation, he is sure to respond and ask a lot of questions. Remember this person is a little self-centered and loves to hear what you think about them. Now on the business side of things, this person is not meant for the cubicle life. This type exceeds in their social life, so get this type around people and watch their charm kick in. In conclusion, the thoracic type is an outgoing person that wants to share their talents with the world. I would also add that I think this is the best looking, the prettiest body type. And the benefits of getting along with people and being liked by people and being comfortable in front of people, those outweigh the emotional cons that are found in this body type. So overall, I think it's a, quite a good one to have, right? The, pretty much any professional actor or athlete or professional speaker that you can find anywhere is going to have thoracic type features. Next is the muscular type, also known as the worker. This would be subtitled, usually the muscle goes to their head. Unlike the alimentive type, the muscular type has the most advanced body because they worked hard for it. The muscular type loves his body and since they worked so hard for their toned figure, this makes them the most confident out of the five types. The muscular type also does not prefer the office cubicle. This person has a strict state of mind that they put themselves in a position to where they must be doing something at all times. The muscular love being active and doing hands-on work. You can also rely on them and don't have to watch them as much since they love getting work done. Unlike the alimentive type, this person is harder to be social with. Since they love being active every hour of the day, it might be difficult to keep up. 
This type is very loyal, and if you are honest with this type, they will be straightforward with you as well. This type loves to be successful. That's why he keeps such a close circle of friends. He makes sure that those around him want to be just as successful as he does. The muscular strong points consist of democracy, industry, and great physical strength. The weak points of this type are inclination to overwork and to fight. Dealing with this type socially is easy, just don't put on airs, nor expect him to when you're meeting this type socially. Be straightforward and genuine with him. If you wish to consult on the business side of things, make sure that you are hard at work. This type demands efficiency, and they expect the same from you. To wrap it all up, the muscular type loves to work hard and be efficient and just wants others to be as determined as he is. I would also add that the person doesn't actually have to be muscular. The main features of this type are going to be a squareness, square hands, even on a skinny person, this is likely to be a characteristic of a muscular personality, square jaw, square face, square chest area, again not really having to do with the muscle mass itself. Same with the Alimentive, if you have the round features you don't need to be fat or overweight at all to be an Alimentive type. And the muscular type overall will prefer simple hearty foods over fancy things like that, simple comforts, simple activities with friends and such rather than the more dramatic thoracic type or the more luxurious Alimentive preference. Next is the Osseous or the Stayer. This is the bony type, they're the tallest type, anybody over 6 feet tall, guarantee they have some osseous in them. Bony knuckles, bony features in general on any size of a human being is going to indicate some osseous. The osseous type was given the name because the definition of osseous means to turn into bone. This type is very thin in size and that's why they have the most advanced bone structure. You can tell this type apart from the rest by observing their bone structure. Usually their bones will appear too big for their body. The bone structure is so advanced on this type that it often ties into the height. The osseous type is usually the most intelligent. The author believes this so much that the phrase, go straight to them in the dark, was used. This type is also the most dependable of all five types. If you need a job done, this is the person you would ask. But this type also expects the same thing from you. This person loves responsibility and will always be on the lookout for it in their daily lives. These are the kinds of people that will keep a close circle of friends. The Osseous is not a star in the social life such as the Thoracic. He is a man of few words and just likes to keep to himself. The Bony Man does not like people who try to speed him up, hurry him, or make him change his habits. Flashy people irritate him, but his worst pet peeve is people who try to order him around. This type cannot be driven. The only way to handle him is to let him think he is having his own way. Now into the business side of things, the Osseous is really reliable in keeping his word. Orderliness is the main business asset of this type. The Osseous excels in dependability, honesty, economy, faithfulness, and his determination for finishing what he starts are the strongest points of this type. This type also has low points such as stubbornness, slowness, overcautiousness, emotionlessness, and a tendency to have a lack of generosity. These will be most pronounced in the extreme Osseous type. When encountering this person socially, he hates to be interfered with and just wants to do it his way. Dealing with this person in business is very simple. You just need to hand him a job and step out of his way. If you interfere, it will only cause frustration. In the end, the Osseous is a very hardworking person that gets the job done and is always trustworthy. Last is the Cerebral, the big-headed thinker. The name Cerebral was given to this type because they have the most developed nervous system. It is common for this person to have a large head on a small body. The reason for this massive head is the cerebral type is the most intelligent out of the five types. For this, the cerebral will be doing more mental activities than physical. For example, games he likes must be quiet and must test your mental ability. Unlike the Alimentive, the cerebral type can go without meals and not mind. This is because the more you eat, the more your brain is on vacation. The reason for that is your brain and energy in your body are focused on digesting the food. The cerebral type loves to learn, so this type is fine with a book to read and some crackers for dinner. So focused on gaining knowledge, the cerebral type hates to be social. He is more of the bookworm than the thoracic. The reason for this is that no one is really on his level of intellect, so he looks down on most people as senseless. Clothes are one of the last things the cerebral thinks about before leaving the house. The phrase, anything will do, will go through his head as he leaves the home. This person has a tendency to die young, since his lack of nutrition and good diet habits seem to be absent. He hardly gets the nourishment to live on a day-to-day -day basis. 
The business side of things with this person is non-existent. He hates the business scene and everything about it. The cerebral type's strong points consist of thinking capacity, progressiveness, and selflessness. His physical frailty and his tendency to plan without doing stand in the way between him and his success. When it comes to dealing with this person in a social environment, don't expect much. He will mostly be quiet and not be open for a conversation. If you are ever in charge of giving this type of job, avoid lifting of any heavy objects. Remember the Cerebral's strong suit is his mind. Therefore the Cerebral type has an extraordinary perspective on life, only wanting to gain knowledge and surpass all others. Okay, that was the five body types. Now I just want to look at a few suggested vocations or careers for the different body types and who should marry each other. There are only three kinds of work. Work with people, work with things, work with ideas. Each individual is fitted by nature to do one of these things better than the others and there will be one class for which he has the least ability. In the other of the three, he might make a mediocre success. This is to say that we should choose our work and our career based on our body type. And even in within one certain type of business, usually you can either work with people, work with ideas, or work with stuff. The Alimentive is going to be the best for business. They can sell almost anything. They can especially sell things in the line of food, clothing, or shelter because they are so interested in them themselves. Alimentives are born for business. They can make great salespeople. They like money for the comforts which money alone can bring, and business furnishes a wider field for money making than any other. So the Alimentive likes the commercial world for itself and for what it brings him. The Alimentive can deal with both people and things, but it should be in the capacity of selling the things to the people. The Alimentives have the greatest opportunities today for making fortunes, and many of the multi-millionaires of America are combinations of this type with the Cerebral. This is due to the fact that the world must be fed, clothed, and sheltered, and the Alimentive, more than any other type, excels in the marketing, manufacturing, and merchandising of these things. The Alimentive makes an excellent overseer also. He is so genial, likable, and yet so bent on saving himself work that he can get more work out of others than can any other type. So he succeeds as a foreman, supervisor, boss, superintendent, manager, and sales department head. Things to avoid as an Alimentive you should avoid jobs dealing exclusively with ideas. Books are almost the only things an Alimentive cannot sell successfully. This is due to the fact that he is not as interested in ideas as in things and the things he is interested in, food and comforts, are farthest removed from books. Partners to select? When an Alimentive goes into partnership, they should endeavor to do so with a practical, muscular, a clever thoracic, or another Alimentive. He should avoid as partners the pure cerebrals or the pure osseous. The former are too highbrow and visionary for him, and the osseous are too critical of his easy ways. He should also avoid bosses who are pure cerebral or pure osseous. The Cerebral may be a good planner, but his plans and those of the Alimentives will not work well together. The Cerebral cannot see the Alimentives' point of view clearly enough to forgive him for his two primitive methods. The pure osseous boss soon becomes disgusted because the Alimentive is so lacking in system. Alimentives can also excel in cooking careers, catering, nursing, merchandising of all food and drink stuffs, the conducting of cafes, restaurants, hotels, cafeterias and all places maintained for the ease, comfort, and feeding of mankind. Alimentive thoracics are best in the merchandising of artistic, novel, and aesthetic in food, clothing, and shelter, conducting of tea rooms, confectionery stores, smart specialty and clothing shops, salesmanship of restricted residence districts, fancy cars, and other luxury items. Alimentive musculars would excel in the merchandising of more practical commodities such as potatoes, meat, middle-class homes, durable clothing. The Alimentive osseous can excel in merchandising farms, ranches, timber, lumber, hardware, bond salesmanship, insurance. Alimentive cerebrals can excel in merchandising, manufacturing and marketing of food, clothing, shelter commodities on a large scale in world markets. This type combination exists in most of the world's millionaires. The thoracic type works best with people, so any career that they choose should include that. We've already pointed out the thoracic is a born entertainer. Their greatest abilities lie in the direction of the stage and all forms of its activities. The thoracic loves the approval and applause of others. They are clever, dazzling, often scintillating, brilliant and magnetic. All these enable them to win fame beyond the footlights, upon the screen and in many lines of theatrical work. The thoracic's chances for making a great deal of money are excellent. Entertainment business pays well. But when the thoracic does have a large income, they are also likely to spend it freely on temptations and luxuries. Their irresponsibility makes it difficult for them to retain money.
The thoracic should avoid every line of work that is done the same way every day. You must avoid routine in every form. Monotonous work is not for a thoracic. Thoracics must avoid the mechanical, for these demand to be used in the same way always. The thoracic does not like to do anything over and over. The thoracic should never work alone. They should not go into any career where they are separated from people. The thoracic should select muscular business partners because of their practicalizing influence. The second choice for a business partner is an alimentive or another thoracic. The thoracic should avoid osseous employees and osseous partners for the reason that this type can no more understand the thoracic than it can understand the easygoing alimentive. These two types are at opposite ends of the pole and to blend them harmoniously in any relationship is almost impossible. The thoracic employer, who always wants things done instantly, is maddened by the slow, unadoptable osseous employee. Thoracics do well in art, advertising, anything with a stage or singing, movies or performing, hosting or interviewing, and even reception work since it deals with people. Careers for musculars? The muscular works best with things. He does not sell them as well as does the alimentive, for the things he is interested in are not the things that sell, but the things that move. The muscular likes to work with high-powered cars, machinery of all kinds, and everything that involves motion. Machines are still not yet as necessary to human happiness as food, clothing, or shelter. Therefore, there is a smaller market for them. The muscular is the born mechanic and inventor. He enjoys working with things he can handle, mold, change, construct, and improve with his powerful, efficient hands. Most of the mechanics in the world are musculars, and every inventor has the muscular element strongly marked in him. The muscular's chances for making money are not as great as those of the alimentive, for the reason that he deals best with things the world can sometimes get along without. His money-making chances are not as great as those of the thoracic, for he is not fitted to win the public favor which comes to the latter. Also, the muscular's vocations are not as well paid as those of the former two types, unless his inventions are successful. Oratory, or speaking, furnishes one of the best fields for the muscular's money-making and fame-achieving opportunities. Every man and woman who has acquired fame or fortune on the public platform has much of the muscular type in his makeup, always, however, in combination with the cerebral. The muscular capitalizes his chief instinct. In his case, it is the instinct of activity. The muscular likes activity, so he likes work, and because he is a good worker, he nearly always has work to do. Every person muscularly inclined can make a success at something of a practical nature in the handling, running, driving, constructing, or inventing of machinery. The muscular should avoid all vocations which confine him within small areas, pin him down to inactivity or sedentary work. For business partners, the musculars should select musculars as their first choice in business partners, with cerebral second and thoracics third. Partners and employees to avoid, the muscular should avoid the osseous partner, the osseous boss, and the osseous employee, because his pugnacity makes it almost impossible for him to work harmoniously with this type. Careers for pure musculars will be the driving of high-powered cars, airplanes, machinery of all kinds, and work with his hands. Other lines for him are construction, civil engineering, mechanics, professional dancing, acrobatics, athletics. As mentioned, muscular alimentives will do well in manufacturing and selling practical foods, clothing and shelter, also in politics. Muscular thoracics will thrive in advertising, sculpture, osteopathy, athletics, exploration, medicine, singing, instrumental music, politics, social service, transportation, designing, and dentistry. The muscular osseous will be best at construction, bridge building, office law, police officer, mechanic, or mining. Muscular cerebrals will excel at architecture, art, journalism, trial or jury law, oratory, surgery, or transportation. Teachers could also come from this type. Careers for the osseous? The osseous man or woman can do his best work with things. He works best on the land, forests, the sea, the plains, the mountains, and certain kinds of mechanical things. Instead of combining things and people in his work, like the alimentive, machines and people, like the muscular, or people only, like the thoracic, the osseous must not only confine himself almost exclusively to working with things, but he must work with them away from the interference or interruption or superintendence of other people. The osseous, like other types, succeeds in work which automatically brings into play his basic instincts. His fundamental instinct is that of independence. He doesn't work well with restriction, he enjoys mastering a thing, and when let alone to his work in his own way he makes an excellent employee. As has been stated, he is the steadiest of all. Chances for the osseous to make a great deal of money are few. 
unless he confines himself to finance, working as exclusively with money as possible, or dealing with natural resources, the Osseous seldom becomes rich. He cares more for money than any of the other types, saves a much larger portion of what he earns, and no matter how rich, is seldom extravagant. His greatest obstacle to money making is his tendency to hang on to whatever he has, awaiting the rise in prices which never go quite high enough to suit him. Every person with a large osseous element is capable of saving money, of being a faithful worker under right conditions and of withstanding hardship in his work. Difficult missions into pioneer regions are successful only when entrusted to men or women who have the osseous as one of their first two elements. The osseous must avoid all vocations demanding his constant or intimate contact with large numbers of people. Every kind of work that calls for instantaneous movements, sudden adaptations to environment, many or sudden decisions, or crowded workrooms. He must avoid working for, with, under, or over others. The osseous should never have a business partner if he can help it. When he cannot help it, he should choose a person of large cerebral tendencies, for no other type will stand for his peculiarities. Partners and employees to avoid, he should avoid, above all things, a partner who is osseous like himself. An osseous always knows what he wants to do, how he wants to do it, and when. And one of the requirements with him usually is that it must be the opposite of the thing, manner, and time desired by the other fellow. So in business, as in marriage, two osseous people find themselves in unending warfare. He should avoid the osseous employee also for the same reasons, and choose only the types that will submit to his hard driving. Bosses to avoid, the osseous should never work for a boss when he has brains enough to work alone. He is so independent that it is almost impossible for him to take orders, and the contrary streak in him runs so deep that he is just naturally against what others want him to do. He is the most insubordinate of all the types as an employee and as a boss is the most inexorable. Careers for pure osseous, farming, stock raising, lumbering, lighthouse keeping, open sea fishing, hardware, saw milling, and all pioneering activities are the vocations in which the unmixed osseous succeeds best. Osseous alimentives work best as farmhands, sheep or cattle herder, gardener, or clerical work. Osseous thoracics work best in agriculture, carpentry, railroading, mining, office law, electrical and chemical engineering, or police officer. Osseous cerebrals might be best at the invention of intricate mechanical devices, or possibly working with statistics, mathematics, proofreading, editing, accounting, or banking. Careers for cerebrals. The cerebral man or woman can never be happy or successful until he is in work that deals with ideas. But his planning is often impractical, and for this reason he does not succeed when working independently, as does the osseous. Since this body type is all about the brain, they are often infatuated with dreaming, meditating, visualizing, planning, since these are the real starters of all progress, this type should be encouraged, with a view to making him more practical. The cerebral is a born writer, or in other lines where the brain does most of the work. Unless combined with the muscular, this man writes much better than he talks and usually avoids speech making. When the muscular is combined with the cerebral, he will be an excellent lecturer or teacher. The pure cerebral has the least likelihood of making money of any of the types. If he is a pure cerebral, his ideas and writings, however brilliant, will seldom bring him financial independence unless he gets a muscular, thoracic, or alimentive business manager and strictly follows his directions. The pure cerebral should avoid every kind of work that calls for manual or bodily effort, physical strenuosity, lifting of heavy things, or the handling of large machines. He should avoid every kind of work that gives no outlet for planning or thinking. He should avoid being an employer because he sees the employee's viewpoint so clearly that he lives in his skin instead of his own. This means that he does not get the service out of the employees that other types get. He is not fitted in any way to rule others, dislikes to dominate them, feels like apologizing all the time for compelling them to do things, and is made generally miserable by this responsibility. Business partners to select. The selection of a business partner is one of greater importance to the cerebral than to any other type, for it is almost impossible for him to work out his plans alone. It is as necessary for the cerebral to have a partner as it is for the osseous to not have one. Their partner should be a person largely of the muscular type to supply the practicality the cerebral lacks. As a second choice, it should be the thoracic type to supply the gregariousness which the cerebral lacks. The third choice should be an osseous to supply the quality which can get work out of employees and thus make up for the lax treatment the cerebral tends to give his subordinates. Partners and employees to avoid. 
Though he succeeds well when he is himself a combination of Alimentive and Cerebral, the pure Cerebral should avoid partners and employees who are purely Alimentive. Their ideas and attitudes are too far away from his own for them to succeed cooperatively. The best careers for pure Cerebrals are education, teaching, library work, authorship, literary criticism, and philosophy. Cerebral Alimentives this combination comprises the majority of the world's millionaires, for it combines the intense alimentive desires for life's comforts with the extreme brain capacity necessary to get them. So he can become a man of big business, tend to high finance, manufacturing, and merchandising on a world scale. Cerebral thoracics should excel in journalism, the ministry, teaching, photography, interior decorating, magazine editing, possibly directors for large department stores and other establishments, and some of the best comedians belong to this combination. Cerebral musculars can excel in manual education, trial or jury law, invention of all kinds of machinery, social service, oratory, teaching, lecturing, and surgery. The cerebral osseous can excel in authorship, finance, statistics, the invention of complex mechanical devices, expert accounting, and mathematics. Well, that's my synopsis of the five body types and some of the combinations and what we should consider with careers and partnerships. I encourage reading the whole book, it's definitely worth it, and it's also for free here on YouTube somewhere. You can type in How to Analyze People on Site audiobook and it will come up. That's it for now guys, appreciate you guys. Check out the other videos on my channel, and we'll see you next time. And definitely check out my newest book, Fake Diseases. It covers all of the major topics that come up, like birth defects, blood sugar problems, bone and joint problems, cancer, autoimmune problems, and more. And it's on Amazon for just $9.99. And the audiobook read-along version is free here on YouTube, and the link for that is in the description of this video. Ooh.